We don't get to choose our time. Death is what gives life meaning. To know your days are numbered. Your time is short. You'd think after all this time I'd be ready. But look at me, stretching one moment out into a thousand, just so that I can watch the snow. Doctor Strange's character arc in the Infinity Saga is centred on the theme of rebirth, because all of his major character beats pivot around themes of life and death. Before he embraced the world of magic, he was an egotistical, vain man, but in order to defeat Dormammu, he allows himself to die a hundred times, and at the very start of his journey, he embarrassed a fellow doctor in order to make himself look better. I'll assist you. No. While at the end of his own life, Strange was not only willing to entrust the fate of the future on someone else, but he also had faith that something as simple, as cosmically random as a rat can be trusted above his own agency. So this essay seeks to explore this theme by examining how the role of imagination plays into all of this. And yes, I'm deliberately avoiding the use of trauma theories. You could say I've come to buy. You had fun. They weren't about us, they were about you. Not only about me. Stephen, everything is about you. Imagination is an incredibly influential force in informing our identities because it's how we review our lives. We refer to the past to create meaning, to understand what's relevant in the future, but the risk of this is that it can lead to an obsession with counterfactual thoughts. Like if we regret an action, we can inflate the reality of how a different life would be like if it didn't happen. Life without my work. is still life. This isn't the end. There are other things that can give your life meaning. Like what? Like you? As Marianne Gary and Devin Polishak argued, imagination inflation can occur even when there is no overt social pressure and when hypothetical events are imagined only briefly. We're all victims to our own imaginative impulses because we're always drawn towards our connection with familiarity over reality. Therefore, it's important to interpret the notion of life and death in Doctor Strange's arc as a simple rhythm based on a series of desires, inflations and deflations, because his initial journey can be broken down into three clear stages. A story about a man letting go of his inflated worldview by accepting that he's smaller than he thought, then it moves into a story about a man serving this newfound vision, and finally, someone who entrusts his own reality onto someone else. So in order to structure this analysis, the most substantive narrative beat from each stage are gonna be selected and analyzed, in order to see how the pattern of imagination inflation develops. So I could have my hands back again. My old life. You could, and the world would be all the lesser for it. Doctor Strange is most thematically naked during the death of bold Tilda Swinton because he's given an ultimatum shaped around the limits of his imagination. Strange with his healed hands can either return to his old life as a respected and financially powerful surgeon, or he can truly achieve greatness by serving the larger world of magic and the humbling unknown. But Tilda Swinton goes as far to spell it out by saying, It's not about you. The fundamental obstacle within Doctor Strange's life is the way he attributes everything to himself, which has brought him great success, but it's limited his imagination because his powerful goal-oriented attitude can only go as far as how he's willing to interpret his own existence, not anything beyond it. And this is the part where you apologize. This is the part where you leave. Therefore, it's important for Strange to remember something different about himself. As Jacoby, Kelly, and Daiwan defined, attributions are influenced by goals and contexts. Goal-directed action is an important cause of emotions. For example, obtaining a goal creates happiness and satisfaction, whereas being blocked from a goal can produce anger or frustration. Similarly, familiarity and other effective aspects of remembering may increase when one's goal is remembering. You said that losing my hands didn't have to be the end, that it could be a beginning. Yeah. I think 
because there are other ways to save lives. Are <sighs> we? In the final moments of Doctor Strange is an encapsulation of this process. It's him looking out of the window of the Sanctum Centaurium with his old watch, remembering who he was before his transformation, not as a guide, but almost like a warning. Everything that happens to Doctor Strange after this image exists in the shadow of it, which in the case of his next appearance is rather literal. So Earth has uh, wizards now. <laughs> in Thor Ragnarok, he's someone not too dissimilar to an office secretary connecting people and doing mundane research work. The purpose of the scene is first to contribute to the film's overall theme. Thor Ragnarok is a story about storytelling from its purpose in relationships to how history is told through a selective process. Proud to have it. Shamed of how we got it. To even jokes about how language frames morality. And the slaves of Am themselves. Oh, I, I don't like that word. And to follow this pattern, Doctor Strange's magic is him literally being able to create jump cuts. Nope. Oh, we don't need that. Spotlighting the film's own means of communication. The second is to show his success in living through option two. He's a humble servant for a cause beyond his personal world. So it's oddly poetic and meta to see him literally not as a protagonist, but a simple supporting character for someone else's story. If I were to tell you where Odin was, all parties concerned would promptly return to Asgard. Promptly. Great. Then I'll help you. Because what attributes goal is in context to his life is very firmly from other people. And third, all of this provides the connective tissue needed for his next appearance. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Protecting your reality, douchebag. The most substantive narrative beat for Doctor Strange's final character stage is when he surrenders the Time Stone over in order to save Tony's life, because this is the most extreme direction you can take him. Not only does Doctor Strange serve a cause greater than himself, or even entrust someone else's own fate, but the very words of Bold Tilda Swinton has taken life. You have such a capacity for goodness. You always excelled, but not because you crave success, but because of your fear of failure. That's what made me a great doctor. That's precisely what kept you from greatness. Arrogance and fear still keep you from learning the simplest and most significant lesson of all. Which is? It's not about you. Spare his life, and I will give you the stone. Fear of failure was what prohibited Strange from greatness, so his willingness to die and to fail his duty is what precisely allows him to achieve greatness and accomplish his mission. Strange is meant to be the best of us. So he must have done it for a reason. I fear you might be right. What stops Thanos is literally Doctor Strange's capacity to imagine victory, an action that does not include himself. Instead, in the end, all he does is give the man who will achieve victory a look of confidence to let him know that he's right. The act of pairing Stark and Strange is also an important point of thematic evaluation. They both share similar character arcs of starting out as a vain and arrogant douchebag who learned to become more altruistic and humble, while also keeping much of the same egoic attitude. I don't think you quite understand what? what's at stake no. here. It's you who doesn't understand. Their bickering also serves to highlight how different their core values are, which is exemplified when Strange initially argued that he would absolutely let Stark and Parker die if needed. If it comes to saving you, or the kid, or the Time Stone, I will not hesitate to let either of you die. Tony's change came from a painful activation of his empathy, while Strange came from a sense of duty to something other than himself. Then you will spend eternity dying. Yes, but everyone on Earth will live. As a result, Doctor Strange actually ends up having more similarities with Phase 1 Captain America than Phase 3 Iron Man. But rather than being connected to the imagined community of the flag, as Benedict Anderson would argue, he is intrinsically related to the imagined community of the cosmos. As Stephen Ward argued, every one of us are limited by the extents of our imaginations because everything is filtered through our perceptual systems. As human beings, we lack direct cognitive relations with the physical and objective world. And the world of magic for Doctor Strange is all more or less a metaphor for reconciling with this limit. 
It envisions imagination and reality as being something that's deeply interrelated, where the enemy of both is an inflated sense of identity. Congratulations, you're a prophet. I'm a survivor. Who wants to murder trillions. People think in terms of good and evil when really time is the true enemy of us all. Time kills everything. What well, all the more reason why you should be my neurosurgeon on call. You could make such a difference. I can't work in your butcher's shop. Hey, look, okay. I'm fusing transected spinal cords. I'm stimulating neurogenesis in the central nervous system. The work I'm doing is going to save thousands for years to come. In ER, you get to save one drunk idiot with a gun? Yeah, you're right. In ER, we're only saving lives. And there's no fame, there's no uh, CNN interviews. <sighs> it's not about you. Spare his life, and I will give you the stone. No tricks. Tell me this is it. If I tell you what happens, it won't happen. Life, death, and rebirth are all merely packaging for Doctor Strange's imagination, a power that has more influence than time itself because he now dreams beyond the limits of his own hands, instead through the hands of everyone else. And all of this comes from the simple act of remembering the past with a bit more humility. He shows us that sometimes you have to leave yourself to become yourself. That makes no sense. Do you want to grab one with me? I'm Ant-Man.